Hello and welcome back to Africa Down Under. I'm Dominic Piper. I'm joined now by Brad Rogers, Managing Director of Jupiter Mines. Brad, thanks for joining us. Thanks, Tom. Uh, now, we've talked a lot this week at Africa Down Under about uh, African uh, risk and companies not, perhaps not being able to deliver the same ta in the same rate as uh, Australian-based companies. But I look at Jupiter and you're a company that just keeps delivering to forecast, to guidance, and have got a strong, consistent production platform. How, how do you manage to achieve that? Yeah, thanks, Dom. And it, it has been a very consistent story. Jupiter's been listed since 2018. The mine that we're invested in, Tippy, has been operating since 2012. And it has been very consistent. We've averaged 3.4 million tonnes per annum of manganese ore sales over the last five years. This year, we've just closed out at 3.55, so a little bit better than that average, but still very consistent on production, on sales, uh, and, and cost performance has been solid there as well. So. That's really down to the quality of the asset. It's one of the best manganese mines in the world and also the quality of the management team at site there. So all, all credit to them, I guess, and I get to take the glory here. <laughs> well, we're very ha happy to have you take the glory here. Uh, you, you did say it's a world-class asset and it is in a world-class manganese field as well. Are there opportunities for expansion, for m and activity in that space? There are. Um, yeah, you're right. So that area, the Kalahari manganese field that Tippy is located in, also has 73% of the world's manganese reserves in a very tightly packed space of land, 32 kilometres north to south. Chip is at the southern end of that. You've got mines there uh, that have very long mine lives remaining that are already operating. Chippy is one of those, has 100 years of mine life remaining and it's already been running for 12 years. So there are a few other mines in and around us. That is distinct from the rest of the manganese world where you have some long life mines that will be coming to end of mine life in the next say 10 years. And so we like that thematic, we like um, that supply side contraction that's gonna favor long life mines in South Africa like ours and like some around us. And the demand side's quite attractive as well. Enduring use from steel, you can't make steel without manganese. Manganese is also a battery uh, mineral. So nice demand outlook, a supply side contraction outside of South Africa that's gonna favor mines like ours and a few others around us and so yes there are opportunities we think over this coming few years period and that is our strategy to grow through m a against that backdrop we think that that is really going to favor um, opportunities for south african mines and we're a south african mine and notwithstanding where we're listed here our strategy is entirely focused on south african manganese it's what we know and do well and that area is really the heartland for manganese opportunity over the next few years is, it, uh, is there a risk inherent in, in, in looking to expand within South Africa? We hear a lot in, in the last decade of the, of the risks in South Africa. Uh, obviously, a new government uh, this year. Do you see, are, you, are you seeing more opportunity in South Africa, more promise than, the, than there was perhaps a couple of years ago? Yes, yeah, so I think um, the runs are on the board for Jupiter and for Tippy. We've been there for 12 years now, so there are risks anywhere in the world that you'd be looking to operate, and there are risks in South Africa. But we've been able to trade successfully through those risks. The risks that we face as a business in South Africa have been power supply, which has been intermittent, and I think that's well known, and bulk logistics, transport for ore, which is constrained, rail is constrained in South Africa. So those are really practical challenges that we've dealt with and dealt with successfully, hence the performance that we've spoken about. Uh, the new government that you mentioned is being viewed with a lot of positivity and, and hope. Uh, within South Africa and outside of South Africa, and we see it that way as well. Obviously, um, there needs to be delivery against that, that hope, but um, yeah, that, that, that's been seen as an opportunity to fix some of those issues and that there are well-intentioned people in, in a new government uh, of unity that will be able to get on with doing those things. You mentioned uh, earlier the, the manganese market and the, the demand side obviously dominated still by steel, but yeah. Uh, manganese goes into to lithium ion batteries uh, and the EV evolution is uh, maybe, not, if not stalled, is, is sort of idling at the yeah. moment. Um, tell me, uh, are you looking to pursue a, a downstream strategies or a downstream value added product that you can produce from your manganese? We are. Uh, yeah, we are. So that's part of our strategy and our strategy is to take what we call low grade manganese ore, 30 to 32 percent contained manganese ore, which we produce anyway at Chippy as a byproduct, 
uh, to our main 37% ore production, which goes into the steel market. So we will keep selling all of that 37% material into the steel market. But the work we're studying at the moment is taking some of that lower grade ore that is sometimes saleable into the steel market, but often not. And so we're stockpiling it as waste, zero costed on the stockpile, lots of it. That's ideally suited to conversion to battery grade manganese, which is 31.5% manganese contained. So it's right at the head grade you need. Uh, we think that that gives us a strategic advantage to enter that space. And that's why we're studying that right now. I do agree with you uh, that the demand seems to be moving sideways a bit at the moment. We still believe it's there. And manganese has an advantage over other battery minerals in that it's cheaper than say nickel and cobalt and it's more stable. So regardless of what your chemistry is, um, manganese can help lower the cost of your battery on one side of the battery family, NMC, European, North American battery types, and then on the typical Chinese battery types that don't use manganese, LFP, those are cheap but range constrained. Manganese can in a cost efficient manner add more energy density and therefore vehicle life at the end of the day. So. We believe that although um, the demand shape for a very new market in electric vehicles and batteries within it will keep changing, and we're seeing that in all battery mineral uh, markets at the moment, at the end of the day, batteries will keep improving, the cost of vehicles will keep improving, infrastructure will be there, and that's why we're still working on that. Um, notwithstanding, the shape of that improvement and growth is naturally going to change. Well, uh, Brad, it really feels like uh, you're hitting all the keynotes of this Africa Down Under conference. Growth in, in Africa, confidence in the new government in South Africa, a sustainable development future, and then also that critical minerals, battery minerals elements. Thanks for joining us today and best of luck uh, for the rest of the conference. Thanks, Dom. Thanks for having me.